On September 28, 1860, a crowd estimated close to 10,000 people gathered in Sturt Street, Ballarat to witness the laying of the foundation stone for the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. Back in late 19th century, mechanics were people that had knowledge of some type of engineering, some kind of trade. So someone that worked with machines, someone that worked with tools, you were essentially a mechanic. So mechanics institutes were formed as kind of like a precursor to TAFE. Mechanics Institutes provided access to books and newspapers, lectures, talks and demonstrations. In Victoria alone, there used to be over 1,000 Mechanics Institutes. Today, less than 10 continue to operate in the state. The Ballarat Mechanics Institute is one of the most grand and intact of these 19th century buildings. The Minerva space, the Grand Hall, um, back in the day, was used for lectures, for dinners, for concerts. We had a lot of famous people perform here. Dame Nellie Melba performed here at the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. The architect for the Sturt Street site was chosen in an 1860 design competition. Melbourne architect Charles Boycott won and designed the southern part of the present building. While most mechanics institutes only included a public hall and library, the prosperity of Ballarat in the gold era and the cultural desires of its citizens soon saw a demand for larger premises. In 1868, a new competition for building extensions was announced. This time, the winning architect was a local man, John Holmes Jones. His plans included a three-storey frontage building with grand classical facade, a museum on the top floor, a mezzanine level with offices and living quarters, shops on the ground floor and a basement with a kitchen, scullery, smoking room and store areas. In 1935, even more space was required for the library and reading room and the old mining exchange hall next door was acquired for this purpose. It's a building that has adapted and changed with time and circumstance. The Mechanics Institute has been a number of different things over its uh, lifetime. It's been a cinema, it's been four cinemas, the Britannia, the Odeon, and most people will remember the Vegas 70 or the Sturt Cinema. So it's had a lot of people, different people through, a lot of different organisations and companies to lease the building. Early 2000s, early 21st century, it was in a bit of a state of disrepair. The final thing which led to the government giving us some money for restoration was the fact that the ceiling was pretty much caving in, the roof was caving in, couldn't really hold the weight of all the stuff that was happening and there was just water constantly coming into the building, um, obviously causing more damage. To keep this magnificent building functioning, it was imperative to tackle the water damage as well as repairing and restoring some of the more neglected areas of the Institute. Much skill and care was taken to protect and preserve the magnificent Humphrey Room, the grand Minerva space and the Wonderlic pressed steel ceilings. A lot of stuff was done by hand, which is what they would have done um, back when they originally built the building. The current phase of restoration work now winds its way below street level to tackle the basement. The basement has previously uh, been used for a number of different things as well. Most recently it was storing our newspapers. So we had um, uh, the majority of our newspaper collection down in the basement. Before that though, uh, it had been used for also a number of different things. There are other spaces down there which were the men's smoking room. Um, so there would have been a separate entrance off Sturt Street for men to be able to go down into the basement and just smoke. A popular misconception is that the level of Sturt Street has been raised over the decades. The street level of Ballarat has never really changed. Um, a lot of people do think that, you know, the, the street level used to be one level lower quite incorrect. The, the basement of the Mechanics Institute has always been labelled a basement right from the first original plans until now it's always been a basement. When you go down into our basement and many other basements there's windows that sort of look like it should be at street level uh, but that's because there are grates in the footpath uh, so we can see where our grates would have been underneath the footpath and that would have let light into the windows so the light would have come through the grates and flooded into downstairs. Those windows have all got to be retained and kept 
Um, and a lot of the uh, plaster that you see now, uh, as much as we've got to do some restoration work, it's basically staying as it is. The 2021 renovations to the basement highlighted the dramatic candle burnt graffiti on the roof. When people think of graffiti, I guess they think of spray cans and paint. Um, down in our basement, it's not that. It's uh, remnants from burning candles. So people would have had candles, put it up to the wall and dotted nice graffitis onto the ceiling. From what we can tell, there's people remembering the Creswick Mine disaster, it looks like. There's dates that refer to the Creswick Mine disaster. The restoration of the basement at the Mechanics Institute will again utilise local tradespeople. All local, all Ballarat people involved with this. So a specialised plaster contractor comes in and he'll help us. So we work together. Um, and the painting, um, again, has got to be done in a way that it's uh, sympathetic to what the old building is, so there's some particular products that have to be breathable as opposed to just the you know slap on uh, finishes that you can get. What I look at when you get into these restoration projects of which we've done many um, is the amount of time that must have been involved in doing what was done. It won't be to make it look really amazing and stunning um, because that's not what we want. We want it to look like it you're still in a basement. We won't be changing a lot of stuff down there. It'll be all passive, sensitive and respectfully done. Every week I'm here I learn something new about the building and you know I've only been here for two of those years so I'm just a small little blip in its lifetime um, and it's really cool to be able to add to the history and be able to care for the building so that it can be used and cared for by people after me.